In this series of videos, we're going to be discussing depreciation of capital assets. Uh, over the series of, of three videos, we're going to learn three amortization or depreciation methods. And I just noticed I used the word amortization and I used the word depreciation. I'm really referring to the same thing. We know that when a company buys a long-term asset, in the example we're going to do, uh, this company is going to buy a truck, uh, the asset loses value as time ticks on. If you think about, you bought a truck for twenty-five thousand. Uh, you know, if you bought it in September, as we will in the question, by December thirty-first, that truck really isn't worth twenty-five thousand dollars. We have to reduce the value of the truck because you know we want our asset values on our balance sheet to match reality. And how do we do that? We amortize or depreciate our assets. And so, uh, as I think I said, we're going to learn three methods of amortization. We're going to learn straight line method, and that'll be the focus of this video. Next video, we're going to be discussing uh, units of production method, and I'll explain what that is at that time. And the final video, we're going to learn double declining balance method of amortizing assets. So with all of that preamble out of the way, let's just jump right into the question. We'll do straight line amortization and uh, let's see how we do. Uh, Tinker Inc. buys a new truck for $25,000 on September 1st, 2012. The truck is expected to be useful for five years, after which time the manager hopes to sell it for $5,000. The manager estimates the truck will be driven 300,000 kilometers during its five-year life. Uh, the company has a December 31st fiscal year end. And it says, assuming the manager wishes to use straight line amortization, calculate amortization for each year of ownership of the truck. And what we're saying here is fiscal years. So um, let's go ahead and get to it. So a couple of quick concepts. Uh, we buy the truck for 25000 and I think, okay, well, we're buying it for 25000 and it's going to be amortized for five years, so 25000 divided by five. And it's not a bad thought, except for this one key uh, part. It says, after the five years, the manager thinks he's going to be able to sell the truck for $5,000. Uh, what that terminology is, and the, the technical term for what we... we or stating there is the manager thinks the truck's going to have a residual value of five thousand dollars. In other words, we're going to use the truck for the five years, and after the five years is up, he's going to sell it or trade it in, and he thinks he can get five thousand dollars out of it. So that changes the amortization equation a little bit. We bought a twenty-five thousand dollar truck, uh, and that's the cost of the asset. We have a residual value of $5,000. And that means if I have a $25,000 asset, but I think I'm going to have $5,000 left over, I only want to amortize it for $20,000. And so we call that the amortizable cost. And we're just saying we only want to reduce the value of our asset by the amount we want to amortize, and that is $20,000. So I'm going to use this number as the basis for my amortization. Now the reason we teach straight line first is because it's the easiest, and it is the easiest. It's dead simple. Uh, the math here is very straightforward. We have a $20,000 that we want to amortize off our asset. We want to do it over a five-year period. So we just get an amortization rate, and it's a yearly amortization rate of $4,000 per year. So we're all set. We know we want to amortize this at a rate of $4,000 per year. Now let's look at our years. We've got the year uh, 2012 and I just want to calculate the number of months we're going to own the thing in 2012. We're going to own this for let's see September, we'll start in September, so September, October, November, December. We're going to own it for four months of 2012. September, October, November, and December. Uh, 2013, we'll own it for a full year. 20, oh, sorry about my writing there. 2014, it'll be a full year. Uh, 2015, it'll be a full year. 2016, it'll be a full year. And we're going to end up sell or uh, disposing of it if it all goes according to plan. And by the way, it never does go according to plan. But when we're setting it up, we're going to say, okay, if all goes according to plan, we're going to sell it on September 1st, five years from now, 2017. So we're going to own it for January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. We won't count September. We're going to own it for eight months. 
Now this gets a little bit tricky. There's different rules, and, and and a lot of times in practice, there's a rule called the half year rule, where you in the the year of acquisition and the year of disposal, you only amortize for half a year. I encourage my students to go to the nearest month, so I get them to round to the nearest month. But your class might be different, or your approach might be different. Uh, but what we're doing here is absolutely not wrong to to round to the nearest month, and and so that's what we'll do in this example. Again, be cautious. You might be doing something different in your class or in in your company. Um, okay, so in 2012, we're going to own this asset for four months, and we've said the amortization rate is four thousand dollars a year. So let's calculate our amortization under straight line uh, for 2012. And the math is very easy. It would be four thousand dollars a year, but we're not dealing with a four a full year. We're dealing with Four twelfths of a year, so four thousand times four twelfths. This is why I should do my calculations in advance. I'm just going to quickly uh, calculate this on my iPhone. Four thousand times four divided by twelve is thirteen thirty-three, and I'm just going to round to the dollar here. So our amortization for the year 2012 is 1333. For 2013, we're going to take 4,000 times 12 twelfths because it's 12 out of 12 months. So it's just 4,000. There's no real need to show a computation there. Same thing for 2014. It'll be 4,000. 2015. It'll be 4,000. 2016 will be 4,000. And 2017, we've got to go 4,000 times 8 twelfths. And what you're going to find there is it's 2667. Now, what's important is when I'm setting up the amortization for this this asset, I've said I'm going to amortize twenty thousand dollars from my asset over a five year period. Sure enough, September 2012 to September 2017 is a five year period, and now let's total up our planned amortization. Add it all up, and you get twenty thousand amortized from your asset. So these numbers have to match. The fact that my amortizable cost is twenty thousand, and then when I've done straight line amortization, I've, I've prepared a schedule for it. Yes, I'm, I've said I'm going to amortize twenty thousand off the asset. Now I have reduced the value of my asset by twenty thousand. Now I want you to remember uh, as you're doing this, our journal entry for amortization. I'll just do the one for twenty twelve. Always is going to be the same. So on December thirty first, twenty twelve, my fiscal year end, I'm going to debit. Amortization, I'll just abbreviate here as amort expense for 1333, and I'm going to credit accumulated amortization. I'm just going to put AA, but I, I want you to hear what I'm saying accumulated amortization or accumulated depreciation, and I credit that for 1333. And I just want you to not lose sight that that's what the journal entry is for amortization. In, in 2012, I would debit amortization expense, or, or pardon me, in 2013, I would debit amortization expense, credit accumulated amortization for $4,000. And again, that would happen at my fiscal year. So, as you can see, straight line amortization is very straightforward. And the reason it's called straight line is if we have a full year of amortization, as we do in 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2016, when we have a full year of amortization, it's always the same. If I were to draw on a graph, it looks like a straight line. That's why straight line is called straight line amortization. Okay, in the next video, we'll talk units of production.